So just shooting another quick scene here, Project Turbo LS, uh, just prepping the intake manifold. We're just using a factory truck intake for this, uh, for this engine, the six liter boosted. Uh, so basically, yeah, I'm just uh, cleaning it up. Took all the injector rails off and everything like that. So I plan to put it in the bathtub with some uh, washing up liquid or degreaser just to get all the grime off. I used a wire brush and a little uh, flat head uh, screwdriver just to get the, the big shit off. Um, all the injectors are out there. I'll show you in a second here. And uh, yeah, we're just, you can kind of see it in the background there. So that's the factory truck intake. 75 millimeter stock uh, drive-by uh, cable throttle body. We're just using that. Uh, we're not going anything fancy, so we're just gonna use that. And I'll show you here in the next scene. So uh, just hang on a second. Okay, so here's our, here's our uh, factory truck intake manifold. As you can see, we're just gonna use this on our engine. Here's the factory 75 millimeter throttle body. As you can see, drive-by cable. So that's good enough. Uh, yeah, so I always wanted to show you guys. So these bolts are a little tricky to get out. They're the, the fasteners that hold the, uh, the intake to the engine. So basically what you gotta do, pull it all the way up like this, then you just grab the screw head then it just comes out just like that. So again, pull it all the way up, grab the screw head, extend a little bit, and it just pops out. Okay, so anyway, so that, that's our intake manifold. Here's our component tree. You can see the one bar. This is the one bar factory map sensor. That's gonna be replaced with a uh, three bar. And I'll, tell, and I'll show you the part number when I put everything together. So that's the factory GM one bar for atmospheric pressure manifold absolute pressure sensor. And over here, factory fuel rails. As you guys can see here. So we're going to be putting the 1500cc snake heater injectors in there using the factory fuel rail and a, pressure, a fuel pressure transducer. So we're going to get confirmation with the uh, fuel pressure gauge here that we have 60 psi at the rails and then of course I'm going to hook up the Holly, or Holly Terminator X Max to the fuel pressure transducer so we can see on the uh, the screen that comes with the Holly X Max uh, what our fuel pressure is and as a, and if it rises with our uh, boost as the boost comes in and of course again guys uh, as you can see here we've got our fuel pressure regulator and our return so this is the factory setup on the early trucks it came with a fuel pressure regulator so what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to use this in our application here and see if it can supply enough fuel as soon as that boost comes in and we're just going to watch the fuel pressure and watch our air fuel ratios and if that is correct as the boost comes in in proportion uh, we should be good but we'll see so it's kind of an experiment here so we're going to get this manifold cleaned up and we're going to put it in the bathtub with some dishwashing fluid and I just kind of scraped off all the grime as you can see with uh, the wire brush just to get that big shit off um, again map sensor goes right here so we're going to replace put the three bar in there and there's and here's our throttle body 75 mil drive-by cable so we're going to use that and uh, just show you on the engine here quickly so i made this plate here to cover up where the knock sensors used to be because we're not going to be using those so i just welded up a plate because what happens is when this thing's under boost you get a lot of oil blow by through there so it makes a big mess so that's why i made this plate system here so basically just bolted onto the factory uh, intake manifold valley cover and actually it act, actually adds a little stiffness too so that's another nice little benefit so yeah I just had some four inch plate eighth inch thick welded it up and just bolted it on so that stops all the uh, blow by oil from coming and going everywhere so it keeps everything nice and clean so again that's our six liter ready for boost going into yeah project turbo LS over there and the uh, latest thing I did was I just got these rotors re-drilled for a uh, 5 on 4.5 bolt hole circle pattern so we can put uh, some good rims on here just using a factory 10 inch uh, rotors cheapest option here so I can use everything else so now we got front brakes and of course we're going to be using a proportioning valve and again there's the back so yeah it's coming along slowly guys so 
I'll uh, add a couple scenes here when I when I put this whole thing back together again with the snake eaters and everything like that with a clean manifold well and I'll show you how to put the uh, map sensor in the three bar give me a part number so you guys can follow along and uh, watch how we can prep our factory intake manifold so it saves a lot of money instead of buying an aftermarket system because if we're boosted it doesn't matter how big this throttle body is you know the bottleneck is going to be the opening of your intake manifold and this one is also 75 mil so and ironically not ironically but our turbo we're using also has a 75 mil uh, compressor opening so it, it matches perfectly so there's no reason to get a 102 mil uh, opening here when the compressor uh, core diameter is also about 75 mil so everything would match here and then we'll get a three inch intercooler also so as you can see here the uh, factory truck intake is all cleaned up I had the soaking in the tub with some dishwasher soap overnight and then I just uh, basically just cleaned it out with a rag put a rag in here on a wire brush I don't know if you guys can see that hang on let me just get a flashlight there you go so I just kind of cleaned it out WD-40 sprayed it down there and took a rag on a wire brush and just basically like a pipe cleaner just back and forth until all the grime came out of there so it's probably good enough the way it is so the outside is clean the inside is a lot cleaner than it was so now we can concentrate on putting this thing back together again So again, yeah, just uh, wire brush the stuff on the outside off, clean the inside out a bit. And then, uh, yeah, so we can put this thing together with the snake eaters, snake eater 1500s, and I'll show you what's happening there. And uh, you guys can follow along with the procedure to get this intake manifold or any factory intake ready for boost. Uh, a lot cheaper than going in aftermarket intake, and it doesn't really matter about your efficiency because uh, we're boosted versus normally aspirated so this will work fine for that application okay so basically all the componentry now intake manifold throttle body cleaned up through some uh, throttle body cleaner in there with a toothbrush cleaned up the throttle plate and also made sure that the back of it was nice and clean and the uh, the ceiling surface right here, make sure that's nice and flat. Scrape that off with a razor blade. So it seals on this uh, seal right here, as you can see. And again, here's our manifold bolts, the uh, fuel rail bolts, the four of them there, and then the throttle body nuts that for the three, uh, the three studs here. So that's all good, it's clean. We can put it back together again. That's the factory map sensor, basically one bar. And then this is the uh, EGR block off plate here. You can buy these. From Amazon so that goes like right there that big hole so that blocks that off it's nice and clean so okay so basically what we have here these are the snake eater injectors but I didn't get them from snake eater but I do get them from the same supplier that he does so I know exactly where to get these and I can sell them to you guys for cheaper uh, yeah so we got eight of them and they, these are the specs right here I wrote them down so 142 pounds per hour at 43 psi and 165 pounds per hour at 58 psi 1500 cc high impedance injectors so they will work with a Holly Terminator Terminator X max ECM that's what I bought these for uh, again so we got we got the factory 75 mil throttle body we got a truck intake with the cathedral ports on there uh, let's see yeah okay so here here is the componentry so basically we're using our uh, factory truck LS fuel rails. Uh, I got a 60 PSI uh, pressure gauge on there so we can confirm what our fuel pressure is at the rails before anything happens. And then this guy right here, Holly part number 55102, it's a fuel pressure transducer. So that will be screwed into uh, this little hole right here after I take that plug out. And it will give us the information of our fuel pressure on the Holly Terminator X Max screen. So we can watch that as the boost comes in and make sure that it's a one to one or thereabouts ratio. Uh, here's our three bar map sensor, good to 30 psi. Uh, part number 
to GM part. Now I got this from Amazon actually. Actually no, sorry, Summit Racing. One two five nine two five two five. So there that is. Hopefully you can focus, maybe not, but anyways. So that's the three bar map sensor. And of course this is our uh, our 558416 uh, Holly pigtail that basically plugs into this map sensor here and plug, plugs in directly to the Holly uh, X-Max uh, harness. So you want that. And of course, since this Snake Eater 1500cc injector is taller, we needed these uh, half inch spacers. So I got those from Lowe's. So we got two packages right here. There's just the nylon spacers half inch and of course we needed the uh, the longer fasteners so that's uh, an M6 by 1 times 25 mil so about an inch long because the because we're spacing this whole uh, fuel rail higher now so anyways yeah so those are the, those are the components everybody so this is good for any boosted application uh, if you have a the car style manifold whatever just use the factory rails if you can it's a lot cheaper uh, fuel pressure gauge to let you know what the fuel pressure is at the uh, at the rail before you start anything and of course I went ahead and bought this uh, fuel pressure transducer uh, Just to let us know what the pressure is when I'm sitting inside the car and the boost comes in So that's uh, pretty good and then watch your air fuel ratio of course just to make sure everything is good Just bring some WD-40 in the injector uh, bolts here, just to lubricate the, uh, the seal so there's no, uh, you don't damage them in any way. So again, these are EV-1 style injectors, and uh, the factory ones, the truck ones, I think these are 20, 42 or 28 pounds per hour, these are EV-6 or U-Scar, so you can notice the, uh, the difference in style of connector. So EV, EV6, and these are EV1. So that means you have to get the Terminator X Max designed for the EV1 and the 24X reluctor wheel in our case. And that's part number 550916. Part number 550917 is for the EV6 style injectors or the, or the factory style, this guy here. So we're using the uh, EV1 style injectors. In there. So we'll see. We'll see how everything seats once we uh, once we put the fuel rail on there. These are Hillman half-inch nylon spacers that we need. And they're one inch long or 25 mil M6. Uh, yeah, M6 by one pitch. Fastener stands 25 mil. So we need these longer ones. Because they're replacing the shorter ones with the shorter injectors. So we'll see how this goes here in a second. Okay guys, uh, a lot of struggle, so looks like I got the spacers in there. So I haven't even, uh, I basically had to pop out the uh, the crossover fuel tube. And I've just got the uh, spacer in there with the fastener. Spacer in there with the fastener, if you can see that. On both sides here. So what's, what's happening now is I just put the spacers with the uh, the fasteners in the fuel rails just so everything takes a seat 
and basically we'll just leave it like that for 10 minutes. Uh, it's probably pushing the injectors further into the uh, injector wells on the fuel rail and the intake manifold. So we've just snugged the fasteners with the half inch spacers so everything kind of takes a set. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this guy out and put the fuel rail flange down and try to put that uh, fastener in again because it was a pain in the ass. But yeah, we'll let this just sit here for 10 minutes and uh, let everything take a set and seat itself. And I'll pop this off again and put everything back together again. Okay. Uh, we've got a three bar map sensor. Now this cheaper three bar map sensor, I had to drill out this hole here because it's a slightly different configuration than the stock one. So the stock one slides right in there and it has two of these uh, retainer prongs on there to fit in here. So I had to cut one of these prongs off so it would seat properly. And I also had to enlarge this hole to about 470 thousandths. And there is an O-ring on there, so it seals good, but we only have a positive engagement of the prong and the mounting system on one side because I had to cut the other one off. So what I did is I devised this little plate here. So as you can see here, and it's got the proper, I got another plate here, uh, a nut welded on there. So basically I screwed it down until we just had, uh, it just seated on top of this uh, map sensor. So basically what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go like this. I painted it black so it looks nice. And then we're gonna use our three eight mil fasteners here. And that's basically what's going to keep that thing, the map sensor in there, when this uh, manifold goes under boost. So therefore, it won't come out. So we'll have a nice positive engagement there. I just painted this thing black because it looks better and kind of blends in with the rest, with the rest, rest of the intake. So yeah, so these are 8mm fasteners. Snug these guys up. Yeah. So there's no way this can come out now when this thing's under boost because we have this secondary plate here at just the exact right depth. And uh, yeah, this isn't going to come out no matter what happens. So that's good. And another thing we have to do is we have to install our intake manifold air temp valve. So what people usually do is they install this where the EVAP valve was. So you take the EVAP, EVAP valve out here. And basically what you have to do is you have to take a 3 8 NPT tap. So that's a tapered tap. And basically tap this hole out right here. And then we can go ahead and screw this guy in. It's already got, it's already got thread sealant on there. So this will be our intake manifold air temp sensor that basically plugs right into the, uh, the Terminator X Max. So that'll be nice, we'll just go right here. So basically what we're doing is we're just tapping, as you guys can see, this is a 3 8 NPT for our intake manifold air temp sensor that plugs right into the Holly X-Max. So I did, what you have to do here guys is uh, I had to enlarge this a bit and put a little taper on just to start this tap because it's actually a pretty hard plastic. So what you do is you enlarge it but don't go too far. To get a few threads started, this is a uh, 3 8 again, a 3 8 NPT tap. Enlarge it a little bit, a little bit of tape on so you can start these threads, but don't go too far because like, you need some uh, some wall thickness there to uh... yeah. So we got it, we got it started now, so that's good. So now we can just turn this guy in. Let's just try opening this up a bit.
Shut that the fuck up. Okay guys, so anyways, so what I did is I opened up this, this whole diameter a little bit better just to get a deeper seat with a tap. And it seems to be grabbing better now. So we'll see how this works. So I just couldn't get any meat before. Yeah, we got, I think we're pretty good here. Don't have to sleeve it. At least now we're into the uh, deeper part of that hole. So there's more, uh, more wall thickness. So it's actually pulling the threads with a tap down. You can see this, maybe you can't, but anyways. So yeah, so the trick there was with the, with the air grinder, just open up that diameter a little bit so we can start the tap further down and there's actually, yeah, so actually pretty good. We've got a couple more turns here and I think we'll be good. You don't want to go too far with an NPT because then, okay, so we'll try that. I might have to sleeve it. We'll see how this works here. Hmm. Yeah, so I think we might be okay. We'll see. We'll see. Straight. We'll just blow this out in a second here. Okay. Not bad. Maybe this will work. Yeah, the threads actually look pretty good, so this might just work, guys. Again, 3 8 NPT tap. Hopefully, you guys are seeing this. I think you are. Right there. Yeah, threads look good. So, again, intake manifold air temp. It's already got thread sealant on it. What is this? Uh, got this from Summit. Uh, GM part number 25036751. So, let's just see how this guy just goes in there. Yeah, I think it'll work. See that? It's going in nice and straight. So this might be the tricky part here. I'm not sure what size socket that is. Let me just see my vernier here. That's 750. Yep, 750 deep. Yep, 750. Now I just gotta find the wrench. So hopefully this thing's still rolling, which I think it is. Yep. So anyway, guys, yeah, it's a 750. So this is the intake manifold air temp sensor. I couldn't find my ratchet, so I'm just using our breaker bar here. Yeah, it looks like we got really good uh, engagement there. So that look, that actually worked, just opening up that inside diameter a little bit with the air grinder. So 
just want to do the snug nut and tight. Okay, so we got a little bit of the rubber that they put on here still showing. So I think you guys can see that, hopefully. Anyways, let's go like this here. Sorry about that. So, anyways, so I think you guys can see that. So there's the intake manifold air temp sensor. And again, these are the snake eater style injectors that we got in there. They're not from Snake Eater. I got them from a I got them from a different supplier because uh, Snake Eater wants too much. So if anybody wants some of these injectors, they're fifteen hundred CCs. I can sell them to you for cheaper than Snake Eater does. Snake Eater Performance. We got our our uh, nylon spaces there. These are EV one style. So we need the Terminator X Max uh, five fifty sixteen, I believe, to go with EV ones. And this is a cable operated throttle body. And again, here's our fuel pressure gauge, making sure we have 60 PSI at the rails before we start the engine up. And this thing here is a pressure transducer that sends our fuel pressure reading to the Holly X Max uh, screen. So that's good. And again, our mounting system here that, uh, that I devised with a plate to hold this map sensor in, three bar. And again, we're using the, uh, the old style truck intake. 317 heads. We're going to use try to use the feed and return. This is a fuel uh, Compensating pressure regulator. So as boost comes in increase your fuel pressure So we can verify that too with our screw with our transducer over there on the other side Using a factory throttle body 3 inch for 75 mil. So that's good So what else have we got here? Yeah, so all the sensors are in and another thing that's actually kind of I just I realized is quick little test here to uh, see that you're you won't get any fuel leaks what I did is I just got some air pressure here just pop your air pressure into the fuel feed that's the bigger one and then just hit it and watch this watch that gauge kind of hard to hold the camera Yeah, so you, it, pr it pressurizes. Hang on, I'll put the camera on the stand. I think this thing's still rolling. So just watch that gauge right there. For fuck's sakes, man, you motherfucker. Okay, so anyway, so we'll do that again. Watch that gauge. See? So there you go. That, that means all these uh, injectors are good and we have no leaks. I'm just going up to, let's see, 40 PSI right there, so. And I'm keeping the nozzle in the hole, the fuel feed. See how it's, how it's staying there? It goes down. See, see how it's staying there? What are we at now? 10, 20, 30, 40, almost 50 PSI. So it's holding 50 PSI, no leaks. Good. Hopefully you guys saw that. I think you did. I'll do it again and just in case I have to cut this scene, so let's try that again. So almost almost uh, 80 psi there. Wow. Okay, so it looks like we're not gonna have any fuel leaks. So that's good. Yeah, so there we go guys. I think this manifold is ready for uh, putting on our engine. And uh, when we do that, we'll hook up all the uh, sensors, and uh, I'll document all that, and uh, 
yeah, we'll go for there. We'll go from there and again see if this uh, factory style fuel feed, 516s, one quarter inch return, see if we can keep up when the boost comes in. So anyways, it's just an experiment, but uh, we'll see. So we'll, we'll all learn something. So there we go guys, uh, just another video of uh, intake manifold preparation using the factory truck intake. It's not pretty, but it works. Boosted application doesn't really matter as long as we get, uh, it holds pressure, we're good. So uh, yeah, so we got all the sensors in there, tested the uh, injectors, 1500cc snake eater style. They're not from snake eater again. Um, and uh, we put some air pressure in our fuel rail and uh, I think it was it was actually 50 psi. I misspoke uh, there saying it was 80 but I looked at the gauge again and it was actually 50. So uh, so yeah so we'll uh, I'll put this video together and uh, excuse the swearing but it, uh, I think it might be a little bit funny when you hear me swear because everybody swears. So again guys thanks for watching and uh, I'm gonna make another video shortly uh, documenting when I put that rear end in there. I didn't do that yet so uh, I'll get this manifold video in and then I'll uh, put the other one together because I got to edit a whole bunch of stuff edit a whole bunch of swearing out or maybe leave it in we'll see anyways guys thanks for watching project turbo LS another video intake manifold prep for our uh, LS 6.0 right there anyways guys thanks for watching see you in the next video